Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. Peter Hawker, Product Manager at PDFTron here. And in this webinar, I'm going to walk you through a number of the exciting additions that we have in our Fall 2022 release. As a quick note, I've pre-recorded this video, so I can be in the chat with you to answer any questions you have as we cover the content. Let's take a look. I'm really excited to talk about our WebViewer Vim release, but before I get into the details, you can find all the information about our Fall 2022 release on our website under our biggest quarterly release yet. There's lots of great stuff in here like true inline PDF editing, document comparison, which I'll touch on later in the webinar, some of the enhancements we've made to our review and approval workflows, as well as our signature workflows as well. But first, let's talk about WebViewer BIM. When we were building WebViewer BIM, one of our main goals was to provide an intuitive and consistent experience across both our 2D and 3D products, so we could provide the best experience for our users. However, 3D models need different navigation tools than 2D drawings. In WebViewer BIM, you'll find a new orbit tool to complement the standard pan and zoom controls you're familiar with. You can use these tools to navigate the model on the canvas, as well as access elements from the model tree. Elements can be turned on and off to get to the view you want faster. Not only that, but the model's metadata is preserved and can be accessed from a properties panel to enable viewing of information such as dimensions and materials. Let me navigate a little bit closer to the model here. We've also enabled a first person navigation mode to enable smoother and easier navigation when you're inside the model. After navigation, our next priority was bringing the world-class markup support from our 2D product to WebViewer BIM. Handling 2D annotations in 3D space is a complex problem. To help manage this, we've introduced the concept of a parent object that we call issues. An issue in WebViewer BIM is a way to track and share a view with others for discussion and collaboration. Let me create one now. Each issue supports a, a title, an associated screenshot, and tracks key view information such as the zoom level, the camera orientation, and so on. Users can then mark up and comment on the created canvas just as they would a drawing, leveraging WebViewer's extensive markup and commenting tools. Looks like I need to make this background color a little bit better. And just like with other markups in WebViewer, you can assign approval statuses to track issue progress across the project lifecycle. WebViewer BIM has launched with support for the industry standard and open IFC format. We're looking to add support for additional formats now that we're post-launch and are looking into Revit and other formats to bring in in the new year. All right, let's take a look back at some of the other features we have that came out with our Fall 2022 release. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other great features we have as part of our Fall 2022 release. One of the other ones I'm really excited about is our improvements to our document comparison workflows. And there's a few different features here. There's a new side-by-side -side view, so you can load more than one document at the same time, as well as multi-tab support to have tab viewing right within WebViewer. We've also improved our document comparison engine, which I can show you right now as well. 
First, let's take a look at side-by-side -side view. So with side-by-side -side view, like I mentioned earlier, I can now load up more than one document right within the same web viewer instance and compare them side-by-side, -side, as the name implies. I can change uh, which document has priority in my viewer, as well as synchronize the scrolling and zooming behavior between the two of them. This is especially useful in AEC with drawing comparisons. Perhaps I have the first drawing on the left and the second drawing on the right. And I can go through and see the changes that have been made between the two of them. Building on top of side-by-side -side view, we have our improved semantic comparison engine. Similarly to what we saw before, I can load up two documents side by side. But, and these two documents, as you can see, look quite similar. And comparing between the two of them, pretty difficult to see what's changed. However, when I run them through our semantic comparison engine, I can see that there's actually quite a few textual changes that have happened. And it's not just looking at changes character by character, but also looking at the whole word. We have a new change list on the left on the right hand side excuse me here which pairs up the changes so I can actually see them and review them as I go through and do my review the last feature I wanted to look at when we're talking about comparison is our new multi-tab support so with multi-tab you can now load more than one document up within Web Viewer and have tabular viewing. So I can jump back and forth rather than having multiple instances of Web, Web Viewer loaded up across my browser tabs. We also have APIs to programmatically add and remove tabs to close them down. And you can see which tab is open as well. All right, let's go back and take a look at some of the other features that we have as part of our fall 2022 release. One of the other ones that I want to talk about is how we've tried to streamline our review and approval workflows. And we've done this in a few different ways. First, we've improved our multi-select, how we group annotations, as well as allowing you to add annotation attachments that lets you embed a file into an annotation comment. Let's see that in practice. Okay, first let's talk about multi-select. Within Web Viewer, you've always been able to uh, select and group and modify comments. However, we wanted to make it a little bit more easy and intuitive for our users. With that, we've added a new multi-select mode, which I can enable up here. And this lets me select more than one annotation and perform various actions on them. Now, let's say in this particular case, I've noticed a consistent issue in this document where perhaps, I don't know, let's say the uh, font that was used in the heading across these pages is, is the wrong font. So before I would have made multiple uh, of the same comments over and over again. And now we can group these comments together under one parent comment. And moreover, I can not only will this group them all together for me so I have them um, tracked in that way but I can also reply to all of these comments at the same time similarly the comments can now be statused together so that once this issue is fixed I can track it and close it out as I go through my review cycle Something else that we've added is the ability to add annotations, uh, sorry, excuse me, to add attachments to annotations. So let's say, for instance, I have an example of the file that has the proper font. I can attach it right in my reply right now. And it can be tracked as part of my overall conversation. And now, that change is fixed. Okay, let's look at the next feature. 
The last feature I wanted to touch on as part of the fall 2022 release is some of the improvements we made to our signature workflows. So two things that I want to mention is how we've added flags to bring attention to which user needs to sign which field, as well as the ability to style and add initials. Let's take a look. So if I jump into our form builder mode, you'll see that we have a new option under our signature fields where I can add a field indicator. This is useful if I have multiple signing fields in the same document and I need to differentiate between who I want to sign which field. We also have, in addition to signatures, like I mentioned, the ability to add initial fields as well. This is useful in contracts, that sort of thing, where perhaps I need an initial on each page. So I need a sign and initial. And you'll see our signature creation modal now has the option to draw, type, or upload both a signature and an initial. So I have I'll put in my name here. I have different styles to choose from. Personally, I like this one. You'll see it'll apply my signature and I can choose my initials right from the dropdown. Okay, so that's a wrap on signatures and that covers everything I wanted to talk about as part of our fall 2022 release. Again, you can find all the details and more on our the fall 2022 landing page. Uh, read the blogs, which discuss a little bit more of some of the use cases that we think these features may be useful, as well as jump right into the documentation and see better how your developers can add it to your applications. Though not something we've captured as part of this release, we've also been making a number of improvements over the past few months to our measurement tools. Let me touch on a few of those briefly now before we wrap up the webinar. So we've made a number of improvements to our measurement tools over the past few months, as I mentioned. And I've talked about some of these before, such as adding a visual indication to object snaps, uh, improving our handling of lead lines for our distance measurement tools, adding an arc measurement tool, and being able to move captions and measurement captions around on both our area measurement tools as well as our distance measurement tools. The one I want to talk about today, though, is the introduction of scale as a separate concept from the measurement tools themselves. Scale used to live within the measurement tools, and it was sometimes confusing to know which tool a scale belonged to and whether the changes you made in one tool would perpetuate across all of the tools. Now that we've broken scale out as its own component, uh, you can add either a custom scale you might type in, calibrate against a, perhaps doesn't work on this drawing without measurements, um, but uh, against a dimension in, in the drawing, or choose one of the presets. These presets can be customized, and you can choose between metric or imperial presets, depending on your use and what your users require. Now that I've added this scale, it's automatically applied across all my different tools. So whether I want to measure an area or a distance, I know that it will use the same scale across both. I can also add multiple scales. So uh, if there's perhaps uh, an inset on the drawing or maybe an elevation view or something that uh, is to a different scale, then I can measure both of those on the same uh, on the same drawing. I hope you've enjoyed this webinar and I'm still here in the chat and happy to answer any other questions you have about anything I've covered today or any other part of our fall 2022 release.